Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Trust and Believe. Today, we are continuing our series where one of my amazing and lovely Fit Fan members come to the Transformation Center, or maybe sometimes it'll be virtual, and interview me. Uh, today, we have the incredible Lori Nudie. For those of you who are part of our safe space and our other communities online, you probably know Lori. And if you don't, Lori has been a part of my Fit Fan for a very long time. We've had many, many discussions, and she <laughs> She told me in November of 2020 that she would love to interview me. So when we came with the idea for our Fit Fam to interview me, we called Lori. So get ready to trust and believe. Somebody say, hey, yeah. no, no, no. What's up? He's better than Oprah. Come on, y'all. This is Sean T, and it's time to trust and believe. Okay, everyone, we're back. Lori, I'm just going to turn this over to you. I always say I get a little nervous. Even though I love getting asked questions, I always get a little bit nervous because I never know what's going to happen. But as you all, as you know from coming to my events all the time, if you ask me a question, I'm sure going to answer And you may begin. I am honored to be here and to interview you. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) We've already learned so much about you from your live events and from podcasts and so many Q&As that I kind of wanted to ask a little bit out of the box questions for you. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Instead of your typical ones. So if there are any that you don't want to answer, feel free. (laughs) I'm going to answer everything. Okay. Okay. We'll start out with an easy one. Okay. Okay. So we all know that you love fitness and you love dance and you love tennis and you love being a father and a husband. What's something just for you? that makes your heart beat really fast or sets your soul on fire? I think a lot of people know this. Well, there's two things. One is tennis. That's it. That is the thing. Like, it makes me so happy because I'm being taught. It's really tough. And I find success every single day. So that's one thing. The other thing that I really, really love is, and most people might squawk at this and be like, oh my gosh, I love going on vacation Without my husband, too. I love going on vacation with him. I think, obviously, you know, he's my best friend and whatever. But I love going on vacation without him, too. Like If he said Bayballs, for those of you know, Scott calls me Bayballs. If he said Bayballs, I'm sending you away for four days. I don't want to go longer than that because I would miss them and the kids or whatever. But three days, three or four days, I would be like, peace to the O U. T. I okay? Just because, like I mentioned before, when Jessica did this interview, I actually liked being alone. And... I just kind of like refill my cup, but I don't know. I'm pretty simple. Um, there are two things that kind of tennis and being alone just kind of lights my fire. Like my favorite place to go is Southern California. Go to a resort. I can play tennis there. I can finish playing tennis. I can recover. I can have an old fashioned with some French fries <laughs> and a salad. I can go take a nap and then go play tennis again in the afternoon. It's like a dream day of nice. mine. Yes, it is. When you packed up your little Ford Focus and you headed from Jersey to L.A., mm-hmm. Did you have a backup plan at the time if it didn't work out? Or did you just always trust and believe from the beginning in yourself? And if so, how was that instilled in you from the beginning to be able to trust and believe? There was no way in the world that I was going back to Jersey. When I drove that Ford Focus across country to Los Angeles to become a professional dancer, I I was just like... There's no way. And so the reason why, like, I really trusted and believed in my, just my education, because I, you know, I went to school and, but during uh, college years, and it started in high school, I was the president of clubs, I was a vice president of my class, I was captain of sports teams. Um, Of course you were. And then, and and that sounds like I'm bragging, but I'm not. It's just like... My mother, one, instilled in me, like, go get it. My grandfather was a pastor. So basically, he, uh, you know, being a pastor is a a business, you know. So then my grandfather and my grandmother worked really hard together. They taught me the, the value of money. But most importantly, they taught me the value of hard work. Um, And then I had an amazing track coach that was like run through the finish line, which you've heard me talk about many times. He's like, if you lean at the finish line and you stop the next practice, you have to run at the end of practice a a 5K. So there was no like there was there was no like leaning at the tape. It's like you lean at the tape, but you better you better be leaning to continue to push yourself forward. 
Uh, so when I went to LA, and no one really knows this, but that's the main reason why I took my brother, is because I knew that along the way, I would constantly be reminded of home. It was away. So him being there... And my brother's fast. Like, we got to L.A. and he already had a hookup in the mix. Like, I, I was in my apartment. My brother was like, I know somebody in this party town. I'm like, I don't even know the geography of this place. And you found somebody to hook up. <laughs> so, along the way, I'm like, there's no way. Plus, the other thing was like, uh, and this is something that's really important, is I went to L.A., wanted to be a professional dancer, but I had gotten awards for being a group exercise instructor. So I had a job already set up at the most popular gym in Los Angeles, just from my networking and my skill of a group exercise instructor. It's like what I love to do, you know, what I, what I do on screen. Like, let's say I didn't become a professional dancer or a beach body uh, trainer. I was like, I could always be a manager of a big gym, mm-hmm. right? And still be successful at something. So I was never going home. No man, Pam. <laughs> there was no way. I was out. Okay. Good That's question. Wonderful. Though. Thank you. Okay. So my next question is less technical. I want the answer to be less technical if possible oh. and more personal. Oh, okay. But because I'm sure you've been asked this before, so I don't want, I don't need the general answer, but your method for creating new programs I'm curious about what your creative process is like in terms of when you create choreography for a dance or when you're creating a new fitness program, how do you make the moves different than every other fitness routine that you've already done because there's only so many certain moves? When you came out with Transform 20, you had awesome moves we've never seen before. (laughs) How do you, what's your creative process in designing all of those, whether it be dance or fitness? I'll start with da- that's a great question, um, and it won't be general. I'll start <laughs> with a, I'll start with dance. Yay. You know, I've been really struggling the past couple of days, just because what people don't know behind the scenes of you know shooting a workout video and creating one. There's a lot that goes into it, from development to music to yeah. um, location, and then you have to please everyone. And Beachbody is a corporation, so. I don't, I don't want to say in a negative way, but every corporation, as you know, is there's political. It's like you have to please the CEO, but you also have to please the trainer, but you also have to please the director, but you also have to please the business leader. So it's like all these things. And I'm a very sensitive person. Right. So I cannot create in turmoil. And so it's been very tumultuous the last few days, but not like in an argument, like fighting kind of way. It's just like indecisive because everybody wants the best. So I was really struggling yesterday. And that's why this is a great question. So yesterday specifically, I was supposed to shoot a video and I had zero creative, creative fuel in my body. And I realized the reason why I didn't have the creative fuel and I'm wasting my time trying to create something i'm like if i do this i'm going to change it anyway is because i don't see the big picture and this is going to answer your question the reason why i'm able to create is because i'm able to see the big picture where i'm shooting who i'm shooting for the different like walks of life body types weight loss results like i get to see the big picture and yesterday i was missing a piece of the puzzle and i was like there's no way so i woke up this morning And I was like, I still don't have an answer on what I need, but I have to create a way to be successful. So I'm so let's get up has there's a song in there that's a swing dancing song, right? It's super fun. And so I was like, I don't have the visual of what I need to create. So I'm going to create a visual. So this morning, the the, the outfit that I posted in, you know, I was like dressed in my Mm -hmm. nice little my little tight pants and my white shirt. I was like, I'm going to record in this today. And that way it'll give me like, I feel like I'm at a swing, wow. you know, kind of thing. So that's what I did like today. I can create last minute really well because I feel what's happening. I create every single one of my workouts. There are some times where I bring like people in just to like bounce off ideas, right. but there's a lot of people that put programs out there and people create them for sure. them. No. I know. No. <laughs> it's no, all no, you. No, 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 no. We feel that it's all you. But not even like, it's not like a boastful thing. It's just that I don't feel like I would be able to speak authentically to the motivation and journey that you're going on. Right. If someone was like, here's a piece of paper, here are the workouts you're going to do, and then you can go home. Like, I, I want to be stressed at night. I want to be thinking about the moves. I want to be thinking about the music. Like, the music that you're going to hear in Let's Get Up. 
I, I choreographed it. My friend wrote it. Some songs that we wrote together, you hear my voice on some of the songs. Like, I have to be fully engulfed, whether it's dance or fitness, so that I can speak to the experience. Yes. And it comes through your passion, your creativity, and your individuality. And we're Thanks. so excited for it oh, to come thank out. thank you. I'm going to accept that. Usually I'm like, eh, get out of here. But I'm like, no, thank yes. you. No, <laughs> yes. Thank you. Okay. What is your dream project, either inside or outside of your industry? Whoa, that's a tough one. I would love to be a massage therapist. Like, if I could be a massage therapist on the side, I love the kinesio. And and I mean men and women, not like, yeah, I just want to touch a bunch of men. (laughs) Men and women, like, I love the human body. I think it's the most amazing thing. I just think it's so cool. Like, being 20 plus years in the fitness industry, I see people slowing down that were, that could jump higher than me before. You know, the Brian Wolfs of the world. He probably ain't slowing down, but one day I'm be like, Brian, at 85, he'll probably hit a wall. He'll still be out in the snow. But I look at the Brian Wolfs. So I look at even you, how you sometimes say, I lost 20 pounds. And I'm like, you know, some, maybe some of the reasons that you or me or, or Scott or Alex or whomever may not want to work out the next day is because they just haven't been stretched or they just haven't had that extra touch to really like their range of motion to be supported. So I have a massage therapist that is so funny. He has been a fan of mine for a long time. And he just told me yesterday, he's like, you know, I commented on your post years ago and you never wrote back. And, you know, I didn't know he was as such a fan. You know, it was like really nice. And, right. you know, it was cool because he's working on my body, somebody that he really admires wow. and stuff. And so that's that would be a dream. I, even if I never become like a massage therapist, because like, how am I going to be like, hey, come get a massage. Man. I'm like, Mm-mm. not being Shanti and Line being a gay guy. This is a whole situation. Well, actually, I probably can make a lot of money. But um, I, just, I think just wanting to get certified in it would just be really fun. It just upped my knowledge of, you know, physiology, kinesiology. That's and amazing. Stuff, so. But ask me about your, because, so you know, she got I, something in that brain of hers. <laughs> well, I know <laughs> two things you've mentioned where I will go campaign to the end of the earth for you to make it happen if you were serious about it. Okay. Um, but you've mentioned your own talk show and you've mentioned a cooking show. Okay. And I want to know, were you serious? Is it just, was that a hobby or something funny? Because I think you would be amazing at either one of them. You know, so I still have a desire because I love being messy. I love being fun. (laughs) I love dancing. But you see a lot of talk shows out there and people like, talk is old, talk is this. But I think talk a lot of time is overproduced and you know let's take Wendy Williams some people don't like her but but her first 20 minutes of her show is her being authentic to her mm-hmm. that's why she's been on for 10 plus years whether people like her or not she, like she's just being her and I feel like in a in a setting where I could just be me mm-hmm. You know, I mean, like for me, the, it would open up. I would have a full on dance show, like twerking. We kick it. And, but then, you know, it's like Ellen dances, but like, you know, whatever. But I would dance, then I would talk, then I would cook. Like, it's like everything in one. It'd just be just like um, an hour of complete messiness and fun. Yes. And so, yes, I would love to do it. I just, find, even like we've gotten calls to have our own reality show. And I just think so many things are overproduced that it would put me in a box. So, True. True. Um, like if I had a just like I, I want a 15 minute cooking show where I'm going to show you what to cook while it's cooking. I'm going to be messy. I'm going t- to have a guest <laughs> in there. We'll teach him how to dance. We'll talk about sex. We'll talk about fitness. We'll talk about everything. The food gets done. We sit down at the table to continue. Like it's not just like, you know, I want to stand behind the counter right. and talk like I want it to just be like crazy. Oh, we've seen you put the dish in the oven and then twerk as you're holding <laughs> exactly. the door. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the Sean style <laughs> show. <laughs> okay. It's so my next question is a little bit deeper. Okay. Um, what things have you learned about life and the human condition mm. from being a celebrity? And how has that all kept you so very humble? Oh, uh. The one thing that I've learned about life, the human condition, is that being a celebrity is bullshit. (laughs) Not because I don't enjoy being like well known for something, for me, for something positive. But I like I loved how how Alex has has treated me from the day she met me, even though she probably was like, oh, my gosh, like what? Like Scott had cornrows at at her (laughs) interview. Right. But she's always treated me like Sean. 
Sean, right. like a human. And I just, I'm like, for me, I just appreciate that. But I think celebrities in general, while I, trust me, I love Serena Williams, you know, but when I'm hanging out with her, I am able to treat her like mm. Serena, like this funny person to look past what I love on a tennis court. Right. I love what she does on a tennis court. And I've told her how inspiring she is to me. But when we're on the tennis court, if we're playing something like I'm trying to beat her down, you know what I mean? <laughs> like we played tennis one day together and she hit the ball at me so hard. And later, later in the night, she's like, I'm sorry I hit it so hard. I was like, I just didn't get an opportunity to hit it hard back. Right. And, right. but I think a lot of times with celebrities, what happens is people put them on a the pedestal and there is, and I bet you every, um, I would say, and this is being conservative. I would say at least 80% of celebrities would agree to what I'm about to say. Your mental health is affected being a well-known person. It is sure. so like you have, I think if you, that's the human condition that you realize how much your mental health is important and it sneaks up on you. Cause at first you walk down the street and people are like, Hey, and it feels great right. and it's amazing and it's incredible. And then it keeps going and keeps going. And then when, the, when smartphones came out, it was like, can I take a picture? And then it's like somebody sending you a drink, which I don't really mind that. <laughs> except when you get like three or four. And then like you're in a bad mood that day. Or if me and Scott are like at a restaurant, but we're not in a good place. And we went out because we wanted to just like leave the house and talk about our issues. And then somebody comes over and they're like, oh, my God, I love you. And we're like, oh, thank you. And really, we want to cuss each other the fuck out. Right. Like, not really. But right. that's where it gets hard. And then there's some people who uh, understand, you know, Barriers or you know whatever boundaries, yeah. if you will, but uh, some people don't. But you know, it's not the fault of the fan because they see someone that either inspired them and they love them in their movie, they love their song, and they just want to like tell them. Mm -hmm. But you, as a celebrity, you're not allowed to be like, you know, I'm having a really bad day. Can you <laughs> see, like, can we do this next time? Because they're probably never going to see you right, again. Right, right. For instance, like. I was at uh, Indian Wells Tennis Tournament, and guess who came into the mother freaking room, uh, the suite that I was in? What have you told Sia. Me? I don't think I've no. told anyone this <gasps> story. So I am wow. in the suite, and you know, Sia never shows her face, right? right? Like you just so you. I'm not, I never Googled her to be like, I want to see what her face looks like, because just out of respect, like I just kind of liked it, and right. you know. Chandelier is my life. So I'm in there, and like this woman's in there, and she's like, just like a natural. I don't even think she has makeup on. I think she's just like a naturally beautiful woman. She's like super jovial. You, I kind of just say hi and like keep it moving. I don't know who she is. I don't know that she's a celebrity. Oh my gosh! I'm on the other side of the room, and someone says, "Do you know that Sia?" And I literally like every <laughs> blood vessel. Every ounce of water in my body, my tear ducts, everything just froze. I became Iceman because I was like, eh. I was like, oh my God. And I just wanted to start singing, I want to swing from the chandelier. And I did not, I, no, nope. Let me tell you why I didn't do it because she was like having a really good time, whatever she was. And I just did not, I was like, I don't want to interrupt that by being like, you know, I just didn't want to do it. But I redeemed myself, not with her. I'm going to meet her one day. But at one point I met um, Gladys Knight. <gasps> wow. And we were sitting at a tennis tournament. I met her through a friend. So we were sitting together at a tennis tournament. And she started asking me about my life. And, you know, she was like, whatever. And she saw my tattoo. She's like, trust and believe. And we were just talking. Oh. We started watching the tennis match. I think we were, at, Serena was about to play. There was a changeover or like a part in the match where, you know, this time. And she tapped me on my shoulder and she handed me a napkin. And she was like, you know, how does this sound? And she wrote a song. She started writing a song about trust and believe. She was like, you know, I just feel your energy. And you're just like... You're such a beautiful soul. And she wrote it right there while we were at the tennis court. And I was like, I don't want to take it until you finish. And I'm still, wow. I still like, so like wow. it's things like that that happened too that like offset the Sia incident <laughs> that I'm like. <laughs> but so my, my thing is like, 
being a celebrity, like I know how it feels to be the person that people come up to and you may not want to. If, if I'm having a good time, like even if you're in a good mood to be interrupted. So that's why I didn't go up to see you. But guess what? In the next breath, I meet Gladys Knight. She's super nice. And she does something for me while I'm not being like turning around every right. five seconds to talk to her. Right. So it just like balances out. And I meet a lot of celebrities and a lot of them know Sean T and it's really cool. But you meet them and when you meet another celebrity that you start having a conversation with, there's it's like a fraternity or sorority. Like everyone knows that you're still stressed. Everyone and you can start talking about these things. I've I've had some conversations with celebrities that you would be like that you just open up because they you get it, you know? And you open up as Sean. And I open up as Sean. Right. You know, I'm with I'm always with Scott. Like cause a lot of celebrities know me as the Sean T on the screen, right? Mm-hmm. But they see me with my husband. They see me holding his hand. They see us give each other a kiss. And it it just opens up like just kind of the wall between Sean T and not surprises in like, oh my God, but it's just like wow. Like right. you see their character. But I can tell you that mental health, everyone can say, like, yes, I've had a bout of mental health being in the spotlight. I mean, think about somebody who's a CEO or even you. You just told us before we started or you told me before you started like you're excelling in your company. That actually adds pressure. You're like, wow, I want to take off tomorrow but I'm doing really well. What are people? You know, it's like that kind of thing. I don't think celebrities are more important than like people who aren't celebrities. I'm just saying that Mental health is a thing that all people go through, and that's the human. That's the common denominator of the human condition. That being a celebrity like grounds you and reminds you, like we eat, we sleep, yeah, we sh- <laughs> the whole thing. That's so interesting. Thank yeah. you because I I wanted to ask you that because you are not the typical celebrity, right? And you are so real, and you treat everyone the same. So it's really interesting finding out how you feel being a celebrity within that realm. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Okay. Okay. So this is a more personal one. You don't Uh, have to go deep if you don't want, but a lot of your fit fam wonders this question. Okay. Wonders the answer. Yes. A lot of them wonder the answer to this question besides energy. Mm -hmm. What do you get out of creating such close relationships to your fit fam? Because you give so much to all of us. How does it come back to you and add value to your life? I know that when you're on stage, you feel our energy and that helps you, but you're so kind and gracious and generous to us. How do like, what do you benefit? How do you have with all the time, with your time being so precious, how does this add any value to your life by having all of us as your fit fam? I'll say a real thing first and then I'll say something funny and then I'll answer, answer your question. So the real thing is, you know, when I finish an event with you guys, I am exhaust balls. <laughs> like I give, I give it all. I give you the same energy in the space that I can give you, and I'm so completely exhausted. So I want to say, like, you know, I'm going to answer what I get, but I, it is, it is. I don't look at you guys as work, but it is my life's work. Yeah. So it is exhausting because yes. I do love, I love to do it going into the event, and then I get home and I'm like. Can we just call them and ask them to bring me a drink? Because, you know, you guys you guys get on Zoom and you start celebrating. And I'm home. Knock the f*** out. We always say, Can you, what, is, what do you think Sean's doing right now? Is he flat down on I'm, his back? I'm, I'm like, tired. What, does he sleep? I'm tired. Yeah. No, I, but I love it. The other thing that I'll say, and this is like funny thing, and I'll give you the answer. I'm like, I get money, honey. Like, <laughs> but not money from your purchase. I get, I make more money by spending more time with y'all, not because you guys keep coming to the events, but because you're educating me. Like, I think that reading a book about psychology is not as good as getting to know you all, to be able to get more stories, attach it to my life, to share another message, to reach more people. So in essence, you're probably like, well, can I get my 10% kickback? (laughs) But in in essence, like you all are fueling my education. You are giving me a free education, right? Which I would have to pay so much money to get, but I get it from you all because by spending that time, like, you know how much I've learned from your journey you know what I'm saying? Just like by your struggle, your really? your restarting, your resetting, your barrier, your going, like the things you enjoy while you do like you know, I learn a lot from from you. You know, I learn so much. Wow. I get such a a, a psycho it's like psychology, you know? Right. And so 
that's that's what I get that's from amazing. you all. And and I but the thing that's really important is that the trust that you all have in me to confide in me in those minute and a half that we have together at an event or at a picture. You know, I'm I'm really paying attention. You know, know, and that's what I want people to know. I'm paying attention because I care, but I'm like, they're giving me what I need to right. fuel me to continue, even though I'm be tired as hell at the end of this that's day. That's amazing, though. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's an excellent answer. I always wondered that because we, you're so generous with us, but I'm so glad to hear that you are getting something out instead of just appeasing us or being with your fans, you know, that type of thing, which I know you don't have that attitude, mm. but that's amazing that you get that back. But I wouldn't do it if I didn't see the value. Right. Like, there's no reason for me. Right. Like, even when we do get lit, right? Like, you don't want to know my favorite part of that entire event where you are all in your home, most of you are by yourself, and I'm in this room in front of the camera. And if you want to know what my favorite part is, can you, you guess? guess? Yeah. The chat? The chat. I knew it. <laughs> Me, that's why I have this big screen up there. I get to see the chat. I'm listening to a speaker or I'm speaking to you all or I'm working out. And when I take a break from and make Scott work out all hard, I'm coming to the chat. Wow. Because I get to see, like, I, like, that. this is the way I get to understand, okay, people are feeling that part. That's, why do I ask how many more times you want to do a dance or, you know, what do you want? Because I'm like, oh, that's how successful it is. Oh, you know, like, this, like, I'm learning as I'm going along the journey. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what things in life are still a mystery to you? Anything. Oh, death. Be. Excellent. Death. I agree. Because I just don't understand why it has to happen. I mean, I get it, I and it, but it stresses me out. And I always wonder why it stresses me out. I'm like, am I, am I afraid that it's going to hurt? Eh. Or am I really just going to miss people? Mm-hmm. And it's all a mystery. And I was doing a podcast with uh, this guy, Neeraj, who is taking me through my breathing um, breath work. And, you know, he, he mentioned in the podcast how when someone dies, their brain goes through like this rapid dream state. And he's like, that's when people, I guess, kind of feel like they're going into the afterlife or whatever. And I'm like, I do not want to experience that. I'm like... Just like I just want to be gone. Like I don't have right. time for that. Just sleep and stay there. Just go to sleep. I'm like, can somebody just give me <laughs> anesthesia while I, before I go through that? Whatever. It's a mystery to me. But also, love and time. Love is a is a mystery because my definition of love, it, my not my verbal definition of love, but my experiential, personal, internal definition of love, I'm sure would make people like clutch their pearls. And then the wow. other thing is time. So it's a mystery. It is a fucking mystery because I want you to do something. Take a deep breath. It's gone. Like you'll never, you'll never oh. take that deep breath again. Right. And so when I learned in school, at, when I was going through a, a process, so, you know, time is the hidden mechanism of a micrometer, which is of such an accord that I cannot, without a reasonable state of doubt, state the correct time. And there's a commercial that comes on in like one, some app that I listen to, like it's like a news thing. And they talk about Circle K, which we don't have on the East Coast, but there's a Circle right. K gas stations here in Arizona and, and some other states in the West, Southwest. And they're like, for a split second, you have the freshest cup of coffee in the world. Because all special K's now, like, they don't like pre-make the coffee where you pour it in and you press the button and it's like, it could be there for three hours. You press the button and it grounds your coffee right away. Okay. And it, the commercial is just so interesting to me because I'm like, yeah, but only for a split second. Right? And so that's why I'm always like, so what are you going to do with your time? Okay, <laughs> speed round. First question. You're a new addition to the crayon box. What color would you be and why? Ooh, I'm going to be a caramel white Ooh, swirl, honey. Yes. Trust and believe. And the reason why is for a couple of different reasons. Because I think me and Scott look sexy together. Yes. But more importantly, I just believe that the world needs a swirl together so that we can oh. live as one. And when we color a picture... There will be no divide. That's amazing. I just think it's so bad. I want to be a caramel and white swirl. Oh. <laughs> and I know I'll you like that. Because I know the kind of men you <laughs> like too, girl. <laughs> what would be a good theme song for your life? Oh. Uh, 
It's uh, Indy Irie, The Heart of the Matter. Oh. And she talks about when you think about forgiveness, even if, even if he or she don't love you anymore. Like, I just believe that, you know, I've been like, I've been through such a struggle in my life in terms of, like, I talk about my molestation a lot, obviously, but had I not ever forgiven that person and people are like, you know, people get murdered or people's kids get murdered. Like, how could you forgive that? Because I've been trying to get down to the heart of the matter. Right. And she goes on to sing in the song. It's about forgiving. Like life is about forgiveness. Like by not forgiving, not to say that you have to hang out with somebody and they need to be your best friend, but you, you, you hold what you hold on to is what you breathe. But I used to think it was I want to dance with somebody until I was doing my breath work this morning and I didn't I almost lost my mind in this in this I almost like started breaking down. I was by myself and I was just like breathing and breathing. You hold your breath and you exhale and you hold your breath and you exhale and you hum. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, like forgiving people really is a healing thing. And I was like, I want the rest of my life to be about this. That's amazing. Yeah. You're an incredible human being to be able to do that because a lot of people are not able to get there. The people don't get there. I Listen, it took me a minute. Trust and believe it took me a minute. <laughs> if you were given a one minute slot ad slot during the Super Bowl, what would you fill it with? A one minute ad slot? During the Super Bowl. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I could do it in a minute, but I would do it as fast as I could. Okay. And I'm going to do this on Instagram. So I don't know if you know that book, Giraffes Can't Dance. Mm -mm. And so it is the most, I actually know it almost by heart because I read it to my kids every day. And I would cliff note that book. Wow. Because in the book they're talking about like, oh, this guy, like this giraffe is clumsy and he's like, Basically nothing. And all the animals are teasing him, right? They're all like, oh, Gerald is like so weird or whatever. And so he finds this way to express himself. And so the last two paragraphs-ish says, he, there, now all the animals came back and they're like, oh my gosh, because he's like really knows how to dance now, right? Aww. But he, I mean, the way he learned how to dance was, they were like, you know, how did you learn to dance like that? Please, Gerald, tell us, tell us how. But Gerald simply twirled around and finished with the bow. He raised his head and looked up at the moon and stars above. And he said, we all can dance, he said, when we find music that we love. And I just think that it's, look, I get the chill. <laughs> it's so amazing because, like, that's what I would fill the Super Bowl up with. Like, everybody's trying to sell something. Everybody's talking shit about the artists. Like, why would you, why would you book that person? Or, like, you know, Janet Jackson and Justin taking bras off and everything, <laughs> which I thought was great. Right. But, you know... It's like all of us have been teased. All of us go through something. All of us go through a struggle. So I would just take a minute to be like, just look up. If you look up, you realize that while you are something energetically, like we are nothing compared to this universe. So stop acting like you're holier than thou. And everybody has a place here. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. If you had to be named after a city, state, or country, which would you want it to be? Oh, uh, a city, state, or country? country. Um, named after. Which would you really want it to be? Oh, my gosh. So this is going to be really interesting because it has everything to do with Scott. Now, I don't necessarily like the name. I can't believe but, you haven't answered that fast. You're amazing. Well, I had an answer. So my first answer was Jersey, but I know a girl named Jersey. She's an amazing dancer, so I'm like, no. And then I, I was going to say York because I met Scott in New York, right? But I know a guy named, you know, York Fitness, right? Right. From Toronto. So I was like, I would name myself Everett because that's where Scott grew up. He grew up in a, in the town of Everett and, you know, he talked a lot about like him being teased as a kid. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I so wish I went to your school cause I'd have been fight. I'd have got suspended cause I hate bullies. Yes. Aww, but anyway, so, so it would be Everett. It would be Everett. That's amazing. You had an answer for that. <laughs> I thought I'd stump you on that one. Uh, the last one I have okay. is, would you rather have a camera as your eyes or a sound recorder as your ears? A sound recorder as my ears. Wow. Mm -mm. You know, we just finished a podcast. I just recorded a podcast with this guy, Adrian Morrison, and we were talking about this new social media 
platform called Clubhouse. And Clubhouse is an app that is really all about your voice. Like you basically enter a room and people are just talking and they can invite people to be speakers and everything. And it just allows you to speak instead of having to show yourself. So you could be like talking to somebody you never met them before and maybe you never need to see what they look like and you can be inspired from them or you can learn from them. At the end of the day, I wish somebody could record by silence. Like I wish somebody could record what's happening in my brain right. when I'm working out or in my brain when I'm going through the struggle. So th- I mean that's to me that's the best thing to replay. The day is going forward. So you're either going to realize that you're stuck or you're going to realize that you're going to realize those moments that push you to get out of that either tough situation or an amazing situation and when someone wins the world championship in whatever sport they still have to move on. Like, they have to play again. So it's like, okay, it can even happen in celebration. Like, how do I move forward from this and how do I take it? It can happen in struggle. How do I move forward for this and what can I take with me? So um, definitely the recorder. Wow. I talk a lot about my grandfather, right? So my grandfather used, and this is so crazy, we're recording a podcast, I'm going to say this, but my grandfather used to have a radio show. So, like, every Monday night, he was always talking about the Bible in church. He was preaching right. somewhere, either on the corner at church or downstairs. But he would record his radio show on his tape recorder. And I would go down there. If he had a tape, I would just like play it. But then I started, you know, taking his tapes and I would like record myself singing and I would like harmonize myself and I would do all this stuff. And so sound has just always been like very important to me more than video. Wow. So. Yes. Yeah. Yet again, I learned so much about myself just from your answers Aww. about life. Thank you, Lori. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I know you're a very busy, successful woman. Never too busy and, for you. Right. But um, if you want to interview me, you know, just reach out to us and let me know. Just gotta you, and not everybody can come to the transformation center because they don't live right around the corner. But have good lighting, have good questions, and have good interviewing skills, like Miss Lori Nudie here. Aww. And um, maybe we'll interview one day. Not just because I want to talk about me, but I just love it. It's like free therapy for my fit fans anyway we'll see you next time on trust and believe and like i always say trust and believe in who you are